Chill the F out! I'm gonna ask you this one time. Where is your master, Cypher Diaz? Yeah, I'll do you one better. Who's mm, Jedi Master Cypher Diaz? I'll do you one better. Why is Master Cypher Diaz? What? 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 To the Chiss Ascendancy Podcast. Hey, what is up, everybody? And welcome back to... The Chiss Ascendancy. It's episode 83, and uh, today is all about singing happy birthday. Well, we're not going to sing, but we want to say a happy birthday to Attack of the Clones. It is... The 2-0. 20 years old this week, and so... Um, life's been really busy. We didn't make it on the day. Actually, what happened was I was scheduled to record on another podcast and it fell through. And so Uh, I was going to probably try to post that, but that's neither here nor there. And, uh, so 20 years attack of the clones. It's really weird because I'm finally getting to the age where I'm getting closer and closer to like 30 years old. And, you know, like, it feels like I'm finally to the age where you say things and it doesn't sound realistic. So Attack of the Clones being 20 years old does not sound realistic to me whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, dude, I was um, I was a year out of high school when it came out. And so it's freaking I mean, wild. Yeah. So, I mean, I think about that. I'm just like, holy crap, I'm old. But and what's so weird about Attack of the Clones is like it's kind of low on some people's lists but there's other people i know that it's like in their top two or three or four movies out of the out of the nine and sometimes out of the 11 including rogue one or solo which are on high on a lot of people's lists sure. so it's uh, uh, it's it, a love-hate relationship i think with the star wars community i agree uh it's not, it's not on my top of my list there's there are things about it that i love but uh but overall definitely not the top of my list so <clears throat> going back and looking at Attack of the Clones, um, what's so cool to me is there's so many little things that are so uh, so impactful and so rememberable. And For sure. Is that, is that even a word? Memorable, I guess, is the word. <laughs> rememberable. <laughs> um, but what's so cool is it has some of those things that you always go back to. And it's it sure. really reminds me of um, – it's so interesting because – it really reminds me of The Last Jedi in a lot of ways where The Last Jedi is either at the very top of your list or closer to the bottom of your list. Like it's it's a love or hate type of thing. And it's same with Attack of the Clones. And then the lows in, in each of those movies are if you don't like it, it's like your least favorite thing in Star Wars is the lows of Attack of the Clones or The Last Jedi. But the highs of those movies are also some of the best Star Wars we ever get. So sure. it's it's really interesting, and I think it's uh, you know, it's such a weird like, it's so funny that Ryan Johnson gets the hate for diverging from the path that JJ kind of set up, and then JJ gets hate from diverging back to the original path right, that he right. was on going to nine. But it's it's really interesting because you had George Lucas, who that's pretty much his whole style is okay. I don't tr- like George, obviously is probably more humble than most successful Hollywood types. And so he started with episode four because he thought it's probably going to suck. No one's going to like it. So four has the best. He didn't know it was four, but this part of the story has the best chunk of goodness in there. And that's what started star Wars. And it's so funny though, that 
Ryan Johnson's way of like completely going off track is very similar to George because you go to episode one and it's like political theater the whole time. And then episode two, you skip 10 years. You just skip right. 10 whole years. And it's, I think it's so silly. Like I think going back, it makes so much more sense on the surface to um, start at two and do a leading up to Anakin and Padme maybe already know each other. They're already acquainted, things like that. And then the revenge of the Sith would be broken up into two movies, which would really give you like the intrigue of how episode or order 66 is supposed to happen and those type of things. Um, so it's it. very interesting because it's such, it's that, it's that middle child, just yeah. like, just like yeah. the last Jedi, which is so yeah, funny absolutely. because episode five is the stereotypical everyone's favorite, which is the middle of the original trilogy. Right. So I don't know. It's just, it's really, it's really in and out of there. What are your memories of Attack of the Clones? And you were old enough. Here's what's cool about the difference is you're a little bit older than me. So I just remember being like, woohoo, Star Wars. But sure. what were you were old enough, obviously, were there kind of like today, were there theories, were there ideas, were there things leading up to that? Because social media wasn't a thing yet. So it was mostly just like talking to your friends and neighbors and siblings and all that. Um, actually back then, um, I was more of a regular, like I, I didn't really follow it that much. I mean, obviously I followed star Wars, like the movies kind of the right. storylines, but like, I wasn't like in deep as I am now, you know, like as mm. you know, don't, didn't read any books, didn't read any comics. Like I was just there for the movies. Like yeah. I love star Wars. They were great. Uh, but like it just, it, then it was just another movie to me. But obviously, over time, the more and more you unpack it and you, you know, you dive into the storyline, this and how it ties into that and this, that and the other. And it has definitely made a more in, it's been more impactful that way. But yeah. uh, just in 2002, it was just just another great Star Wars movie with a lot more CGI, you know? Yeah, I uh, you know, it's funny. I was getting ready for tonight's episode and I was thinking my first ever fan theory or like. I guess more accurately, my first ever completely misreading the cards <laughs> leading into a movie was Attack of the Clones. So what happened was um, I have an older brother. He's seven years older than me, right? So he's he's like, let's say it's 2002. So I'm like nine years old. So he's 16. So he's already like, you know, he's reading like magazines and stuff coming out, talking about it. What was so interesting was the Dark Empire comics – um, when you think about it, 19, uh, or 2002 is not that far removed from dark empire. So, um, I'm going to do some, a little bit of research here while I'm on the fly, but, um, what's so crazy is the dark empire comics. Everyone's talking about how mad they were. Okay. So 1992. So this was 10 years old. So even though 92 feels like a long time ago, it's the those comics were half as old as Attack of the Clones is today for us, if that makes right, sense. So right. it was still in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that old. And Dark Empire, everybody's mad about Palpatine returning in The Rise of Skywalker and how it undoes Anakin's sacrifice and he's not the chosen one and all this other nonsense. And what's crazy about that is the Dark Empire comics, which were like everyone's favorite back in the day, there's clones of Palpatine. And essence transfer and all those kinds of yeah, things. Yeah. So whenever we found out it was going to be Attack of the Clones, my brother thought they were clones, but he was like, now here's the thing that I don't – and I don't even remember if Sean remembers this. But I specifically remember being in Kingwood, Texas in the back of my mom's Suburban, and he's like, <laughs> but here's the thing. It can't be the Emperor because there's only one Emperor. So I think it's going to be Attack of the Clones of Darth Maul. And oh I was like, Darth Maul's dead. He got cut in half. Yeah. But it was interesting because he was like, yeah, but all you need is the DNA. And I was like, you're probably right. This is We're going to see all the Jedi die because Darth Maul's going to be there's going to be a million of them. <laughs> so that was my first fan theory was my brother and me talking about Attack of the Clones were the clones of Darth Maul who were going to kill all the Jedi. And we were that so wrong. We were not even close. That's, uh, yeah, that's hilarious, dude. I could, I, I mean, I could see that happening, just but, but I could totally see you be like, absolutely not, you know. But <laughs> I was already deep in the trap at nine years old. Exactly. Um, well, one thing that's really cool is right from the get go, Attack of the Clones really sets itself apart. So 
the iconic part of Star Wars is you get the 20th Century Fox logo, which isn't a thing anymore. Um, that was really weird in 2015, not seeing the 20th Century Fox sure. logo before Lucasfilm. Yeah. Um, but anyways, you have the 20th Century Fox, and then it says a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and we're all hooping and hollering, woo, you know? And then you have the opening crawl, and then you see space, and then every other movie ever in the history of Star Wars at this point, and I think even till today, other than the 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 story films like Rogue One and and um, and Solo. Uh, Solo, and even those have a little bit of it in it, but specifically yeah. in the Skywalker saga, you have the crawl, which is only for saga films, and then you have the uh, space. Um, the the what do you call that? A skyscape, I guess. Nightscape, sure. starscape, and then it pans down from there, and you're looking at you know you're up here, and then you pan down, and there's a star destroyer, or you pan down, and you're over Endor, or you pan down, right, and you're right. The the probes are shooting down into Hoth. This is the only uh, Skywalker saga film where you pan up, and Padme's ship is doing that for no reason spin cycle going yeah. into Coruscant from Naboo right before that crazy explosion. Right. And so th- it just kind of like, that's like a microcosm of attack of the clones is like, how do you think George is going to do this psych? Right. He's not going to do it that way. <laughs> and uh, I was watching a video today. Have you seen those videos where everybody's joking around about the, the plot of attack of the clones is uh, everybody hiring someone else to try to kill Padme. No. Dude, okay, so I'll narrate it for you, like, real quick, okay? So it's like, it says, uh, Palpatine needs someone to, or needs to kill Padme Madala, and then it skips to, it's just, it's literally the worst editing ever. It's a picture of a guy like this, like, oh no, and he just yeah. puts the box picture of Palpatine over there, he's like, but he doesn't want to do it, and it shows a stick figure with his head on it, and he goes, so he hires Count Dooku, because she needs to kill Palpatine, he needs to kill uh, Padme, but... Dooku doesn't want to do it, so he hires Jango Fett, and Jango Fett's going to go kill Padme, but he doesn't want to do it, so he's going to go hire this changeling named Zam Wessel, but she doesn't want to do it, so she hires a robot, he's like, and if you really want to be a butthole about it, the robot doesn't want to do it either, so he sends a bug. <laughs> Attack of the Clones is a guy hiring a guy who hires a guy who hires a changeling who hires a robot who hires a bug to kill Padme Amidala, and that was the whole freaking plot of the, of the meme. That is hilarious. But literally, it's so many levels of intrigue of that's the whole movie is we're just trying to kill Padme. Yeah. And what's so weird is like now that I think about it, if the bugs succeed and they sting Padme and she dies, what's the point? Yeah. Like roll credits. I don't. Yeah. Like what yeah. written and directed by George Lucas. <laughs> right. I don't understand like Anakin's Anakin's not who he's supposed to be yet. The clones aren't ready. Like. I really want to know what was the point of trying to kill her because obviously I guess maybe that's an easy – that's like a one way you – I guess maybe that would start the war. Maybe that's what it is is that's what would start the, the war is obviously there's probably new gun ray in the Trade Federation and then you have sure. the Separatists and Dooku and stuff. But um, well, if it's you just think so about funny it too, that if, all these plots. If, well, if, if the plots weren't there, Anakin would have never come back to Padme, which never would have been his downfall, you know? Right, isn't that so strange? Like yeah. you'd have to find something else to be like the springboard yeah. to really piss off Anakin. And um I always wondered that too. I always wondered like I was thinking about it today cuz obviously I've been thinking about Attack of the Clones all day and I was like so in the long term like is Dooku going to be the long-term solution if Anakin won't turn? Like how does that work? And obviously but but the thing is Palpatine is already – here's what's crazy, dog, is that Palpatine at this point in his life, my, I would bet my top dollar – not my bottom dollar. I'm not that sure. But I would bet money that Palpatine already knows about and is starting to facilitate things on Exegol during Attack of the Clones. Uh, How about that? Okay. 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 Yeah. Let that one rock your world. Um. So that's what's so crazy is like – because here's the thing. In uh, the Darth Vader comics uh, from 20 – it's like the – they're doing the 2020 line. So there's going to be like 50 issues or whatever. Um, In one of those comics, it talks about Vader um, going to Exegol and the Emperor's already showing him Exegol. And he already has this giant like – 
this freaking like the size of your house piece of kyber crystal, not literally, but like the size of a yeah. refrigerator piece of kyber that he's like, we're going to, you know, he's showing him the fleet. So all this has been made already. Like, and, and that's obviously, could it happen over the span of 20 years between Revenge of the Sith? And then it could have, but I don't know. It makes, it makes sense to me that he already knows about Exegol at this point. Sure. Absolutely. And so that's what's so wild to me is it's so surface level, like the plan of the Sith, because we haven't gotten the Plagueis novel yet. And even though that's legends, like obviously they're pulling from that constantly. Sure. So we haven't gotten the Plagueis novel yet. We don't know about sifo yet and all this other stuff. And that's – and it's still like that's what we have is just the surface level. But if you look, there's probably so much other bullcrap going on behind the scenes. Um for Attack of the Clones from the Sith and all this. The Shroud of the Dark Side is in full effect already. And it's just, we're, it's so happy go lucky. And obviously, there's like that, well, it's not, there's a murder right there in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it's not, not really happy go lucky. But, uh, it's definitely what's not lucky. A, what's, for the, uh, what's a worse thing in Attack of the Clones? The murder right at the beginning or Padme's fake fro that she has in the first scene? <laughs> Dog, it looks like she just oh, got. Oh Jesus! It looks like Padme just left a funeral and just took one of the flower arrangements and just was like, "Yeah, this stuff that holds the flowers, I'm gonna put that right here." Like, <laughs> oh my god, bro! It doesn't even. It's look, awful. It does not even look like. Here's a random white girl having cornrows. That's strange. It's not even right. that. It looks like it's not even her hair. Like it's a piece of the headdress. It looks like it's. It's <sighs> it's drastically awkward. It's super like, awkward. You know, now that we've and seen the it, the further a we get times, in human yes. history, the more awkward it is. It's yes. more awkward twenty years later than it was when we saw it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, that's one of those things. Samuel you... L. was in that room too. Why wasn't Samuel L. like George? This is a bad idea, dog. <laughs> get this hair out of here, bro. <laughs> oh my god! Um, but, anyways, yeah. moving on. What were your? So, what did you think? What did, What were your thoughts? Whenever the prequels were coming out, were you part of that group that was like, didn't know how you felt about it? Or were you just, you were down for it? Oh, no, I was, I was ready for it. Like, you know, we, we had all the, uh, the first three, meaning the middle three. Um, and then uh, episode one came out and my family happened to be in town. So literally all 12 of us kids went and saw it. I mean, we piled into oh, my, yeah, there was 12 people in the, into my dad's Jeep Cherokee. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we crammed in there. We went and saw it and then we got home at like one o'clock in the morning or whatever. And so it was great. Well, the next year, only half of them were in town. So we went and saw it again and, uh, it, or saw episode two and it was just great. Like I was just there for the star Wars. I was there for the new stuff. I was there for the, uh, you know, they didn't really have CGI back in the you know eighties and such. So mm -hmm. the CGI was fantastic. It was, you know, over the top, it was something different. It was, you know, new yeah I, and i think that that's what i was there for at the time yeah it's very different and i think that um as a kid like as someone who was so i was nine years old when this came out whenever i was watching it there's obviously a lot of stuff that you're like when you look back you're like why is this in here we could skip this sure. but there was so much awesomeness that i totally disregarded and totally forgot like the awkwardness of Anakin and Padme and all of that. I totally disregarded that. All I could think about was uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi jumps out a window and grabs the droid scene. All I could think about was, you know, who's this new Anakin guy? He's super cool. He's got a cool haircut with a little Padawan braid that Obi-Wan had from last time. I'll tell you um, one of the all things that I, got, stuff. I, I couldn't get past was uh, the fireplace scene. Woo! Bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sexy Padme there in her leather BDSM outfit or whatever you want to Bro, call it, dude. She what was, was just... so what was crazy to me was she was like, you know what? I've been leading this kid on. Yeah, let I'm me wear make the this... sexiest thing I can find. I'm gonna make this right. So <laughs> let's skip dinner and just go get alcohol right next to this fireplace. Yeah, yeah, that's just ridiculous. I yeah, this guy's set up for complete failure. This yep. guy was like. Pretty much if you could look in the Bible and see what it was like when Joseph was being tempted by Potiphar's wife, it was probably that scene from Attack of the Clones. 100%. If, if you had to ask me. Yep. Um, yep. But you know what was cool was this was my first experience as a kid. 
I got toys from the Phantom Menace, like just as gifts and stuff. But I was finally of the age where, um, not only because you know we we both have kids. There's sure. and once when they're like, you know, four or five, they're still in that age where it's like, they just want something. They don't really care what it is. They just want right. something from the store. Like literally right. I can go to get milk at Walmart and I'm on the opposite side. And as soon as we walk in, Wolf's like, what if we got a, what if we got a toy? That'd be crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I was finally Starting at the age where, early. Oh yeah. Quickly. Uh, yeah. I was finally of the age where it was like, I would like to get an action figure, specifically a star Wars action figure, more specifically this Jango Fett character. What's this guy about? And so that was my first Star Wars toy that I got to pick out for myself that I was like, wow, that's the guy that I want. And I did some digging before we were starting to shoot this, uh, the show and look what I found. Let's go. The 2002 Django Fett. It was really cool. Um, I must've cut the cable or something, but at the time you could take his, uh, you could take his rocket, his rocket out. Um, and man, I don't remember how this works. Oh, you could shoot a rocket out of there. There was okay. a, a, a longer one that you would just hit the little lever down here to yeah, shoot yeah. off. And then his um, his wrist, you can see his, his gauntlet has this really big bulky piece. Yeah. There was a uh, piece of string that had a hook on it. And so you could, like, attach him to stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay. uh, dude, I remember, like, going on vacations and being like, hang on, I can't. <laughs> start, don't, start, don't start the rental car yet. I'm hanging Django up on this thing. Um, so that was super cool. Seeing the uh, – man, there was just so much stuff. Like I felt like uh, – I felt like the Phantom Menace, Naboo was a new location, but it was a lot like Earth, so I wasn't super enthralled. And we're in the palace most of the time, so it's like we're inside a building. Um, Tatooine we had seen before multiple times. Um, you know, not multiple times, but we spent a good chunk of there on uh, on A New Hope. And then I'm trying to think of any other places. That's pretty much it. Like between Tatooine and Naboo in space, that's everything. But Attack of the Clones was crazy because you were you got not on, not only Coruscant, but you got the underworld of Coruscant, and you yeah. got to watch droids play football in that CD bar. Yeah. Um, and uh, you had the guy trying to sell Obi Wan death sticks, and you see Obi Wan Kenobi do the Jedi mind trick for the yeah. first time in a couple of years. Uh, so that was wild. And then you had. Um, you had Zam Wessel trying to kill Padme and they track her down. Yep. And right before she says what's going on, I remember being nine years old and being like, dang, this girl's kind of hot. And then she gets shot with the Camino and saber dart. And yeah. she's like, fool, fool. and I was like, Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. I was, I was, lying. I was joking. Not hot. Not hot. <laughs> and, uh, and so now another thing that's kind of crazy. Now that I'm thinking about it, why would Jango Fett use a Kaminoan saber dart? <laughs> Why would he just use a like an old fashioned twenty two and untraceable like? Yeah, that just seems like it's so. I guess because it's so niche, and Kamino had been taken off the market. Like Duke had went in there and taken it out of the it archives. It for, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess that is a pretty safe bet. Um, Try, trying to hide himself more. Yeah, but I mean, dude, sense. Jango Fett was on the scene. We got our first taste of Tamura Morrison in Star Wars, yep. and that's the gift that keeps on giving twenty years later. And uh, what was your thoughts? What What were your thoughts as an so you were already a year out of high school? So as an adult, someone who knew about Boba Fett already, um, you were more of a casual. You said, but did it <clears> affect <throat> your thoughts towards Boba that he was a clone of Django, or you didn't care? Oh no, I didn't care. Like I was that made more. I mean, I don't want to say it made more sense then because we still needed more of the story, but that was cool to see an origin of Boba Fett. You know, yeah. it's like, we knew who he was. We knew how he died, quote unquote died um, at the time. And then, uh, but like, you know, he was just some kind of cool background bounty hunter, but to, to see kind of an origin of him was, uh, was actually uh, a cool little tidbit to get. Yeah. And the, it's crazy because the first hour is, is, I don't want to say the word slow, but like there, it's definitely doing a lot of work for the rest of the film. Yeah. And so you've got like the, you know, the politics and the, you know, you're in Coruscant, you're talking to Palpatine, the Jedi are there. And it's just, it's just the slowest, like, okay, so I guess Padme's going to go into hiding. Okay. The flirting back and forth. The But you know what? I do need to go back a smidge. Some of the greatest, like, 
big brother like oh, punk yeah. humor ever yeah. is when Obi Wan keeps punking Anakin. You're in sweating. The Why are freaking... you sweating? Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. And Anakin, God bless. Like I know he's homeschooled in the Jedi Temple and all, but God, like he's like, hey Padme, I have been um thinking about you pretty much every <laughs> night. You've grown far more beautiful for for a senator. I mean. I was like, oh, my God. I remember being nine years old and being like, this guy is not doing so hot with the ladies. This guy can't spit no game. Which was so crazy because at the time, when everybody, whenever Hayden Christensen got cast as Anakin, he was like a sex icon. Like, everybody was like, oh, my God, Hayden Christensen's so hot. And it, it's funny because he's so, like, he was such, like, a hot topic off screen. But in the movie, Anakin could not possibly be more awkward than he already is. Well, that's one thing oh I was going to mention was that that I think that that's one thing I do remember, you know, back in 2002 is just like, bro, does this dude ever stop whining? Like he literally <laughs> whines through the entire movie. And I'm yeah, just like, does. bro, I mean, I, I get it. You're going through this transformation. You've got all these feelings. You're, you know, you're uh, in your teenage coming out of your teenage years. And you're just like, you're very like emotional and uh, bro, I was just like, bro, just shut up. There's a couple of lines in there. I'm just like, dude, just stop. Like, you like know when he when he's by himself with Padme and he starts whining about how Obi Wan's so so overbearing and this that and the other. It's like, bro, you've seen Padme for like ten minutes and you're already unloading all this crap on her. It's like, bro, back off a bit, dude. That's what's so funny is like if I meet somebody and they're like, oh hey Josiah, this is so and so, you really like them. I'm like, okay, and listen, I'm already like. Not, I don't want any new friends. Like, that's not my... <laughs> right, right. I'm already... The people are like... You know, I'm the guy that, like, I'm in a group chat with people I already know, and they add someone to the group chat, and I'm like, what the frick is this? Who are they adding? Who's and this guy? so, I'm already that guy. I'm already that, like, negative, like, I don't want anybody else in my life. And it's funny, because somebody will be like, hey, you like him, Josiah? And I'm like, okay, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, imagine you meet this person, and then right off the bat, they're just complaining out the butt. They're just nonstop complaining. I'd be like, okay, this guy, he was kid. cute as a kid, and he won the pod race, and that was cute and everything, but this guy's a weenie. Yeah. And I think, you know what's so wild, though, is, like, Hayden always got the bad rap in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith, but when you watch interviews, George is, like, like so in love with Hayden's portrayal of Anakin and how great of a job he did, and I think that... I think, in a way, the most important opinion in the room is George's, obviously, as the creator and as the one whose brainchild it is. So it's really cool to see um, this full circle moment. Yeah, Yeah, it's so cool to see this full circle moment as we're literally two weeks away or less than two weeks away from Kenobi. And the people that are my age and your age, who the Star Wars movies were made for back in the day, all the critics were hating on it. But all the the youngsters and the preteens, teenagers, young adults, the ones that the movies are really made for, loved them. But we didn't have a voice yet, especially because we weren't online and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's cool because you and Hayden are doing these tours and everybody's freaking the freak out because that's Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, who yeah. we loved this whole time. But they just didn't know. They didn't have they didn't have the truth of what the fans were feeling out there. So um, yeah. that's really cool. But I, I agree. I think Anakin was such a such a whiner and i think that uh it's i don't know if george did on purpose like here's a kid that everything's easy for him so the second that there's opposition he's ticked off um but it's like there's that awkward sound i'll have to find it whenever i'm posting this i'll put it in the in the video but there's this awkward moment where like he's mad he's on tatooine like you're talking about with padme he's like it's all obi-wan's fault he's holding me back It's all Obi-Wan's fault. He's jealous. He's holding me back. And he throws it, and Padme (laughs) pauses, and you just hear, like, ding, ding, ding. Like, whatever it is he threw, like, (laughs) I don't know. I felt like the Foley artist could have done something a little bit more impactful. It looks like Anakin's just, like, a weenie. Like, he just throws an empty Coke can across him, and it's like, clunk, clunk, clunk. Oh, my God. It's so funny. But, dude, the second half of the movie is, like... You're entering hyperspace, and then this whole second half of the movie, you're going to the speed of light towards oh, yeah. the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, what I, was your like? 
what were your thoughts as it's starting to pick up pace and you're on Camino and you see all these clone troopers for the first time? Like I remember being obsessed with when they were going to the to the conveyor belt getting their helmets. You remember that? Yes. They're all walking yes. down. Yeah. And it's so wild. I've been so nerdy about this for so long. But at nine years old, I was like, that's so crazy because that's going to be their helmet. Like they're just picking it at random, but that's their helmet. Yeah. And I don't know. It, I couldn't, it's hard to explain, but it makes more sense now that we've seen the clone wars. And it's like, that's Wolf's helmet, but he just, and, but at first he just picked it up off the line and then he painted it and then he, whatever. But, uh, I remember just being so obsessed. The clone troopers I loved. I was like, dude, these guys are the coolest thing ever. And I can't believe that stormtroopers replaced these guys. You're right. Right. That was the yeah, big thing for me. I think that once they, you know, figured out what was going on with the army and then they needed the help and they went to go get them. And then once they got to the arena scene and they started flying in there with their, you know, their uh, gunships and they're, you know, shooting people, dropping off clones and, you know, picking people up and all that kind of stuff. I was just like, Whoa, what's going on? Like, where did these guys come from They're, Yeah. You know, and so I, I think that right there, I think the arena moment was 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 my big, like holy crap, these guys are awesome. Like they've got all the cool tech. They they're yeah, just you know, yeah. Dude, you remember, um, dude, the figure crap. It's 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 storage still because I'm still moving stuff over from the old room. But um, the figure that I wanted for the longest time that I finally got, like as an adult, is uh, whenever the the gunships are flying. The there's the clone troopers that are in like the tip of the wing in the bubble, mm -hmm. yeah. And their bullets are not like pew 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 pew. Their bullet is like a laser solid beam. laser beam, right? Bruh. And they're flying yeah. and they're just like zing, just like <laughs> yeah, mowing, absolutely. like almost like a saw gun. And yeah. I was like, I don't know what that is, but there's probably gonna be a toy of that, and I want that one. <laughs> I want that one, right? And uh, dude, it was so sick because it was just like. <laughs> Just mowing down these B ones. Um, well, what's funny is when I be built that uh, that Republic gunship, that big yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Black Series one, um, and I put I put those those globes together and I attached it to the ship. That that literally that sound was running through my head. I was like, zzz, zzz, like you know, you're you literally just, just like head. shaking the ball, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Yeah, it's so crazy because I feel like. I feel like just by the way, like it's – you have to write the movie to really have all these pieces that there's a reason that Anakin and Padme are alone. There's a reason Obi-Wan's going by himself. There's a reason. So there's all this setup, right? And you get little cool stuff like uh, Dexter Jetster that's in the diner that's, oh, yeah. hey, oh, buddy. Yeah. Um, you get stuff like that, but it feels like the last – especially the last third, it's like just an information dump. Like, um, yes. As a kid, you know, we we weren't getting, like, novels and comics and stuff to really help back up some of the stuff. Like, even if you don't like The Rise of Skywalker, there's material coming out now that's giving you more info on who the Knights of Ren are. And before Kylo Ren, there was just Ren. And Ren has a lightsaber called The Ren, and that makes the right. decisions for them. And, like, there's all this stuff that they're retroactively adding. We didn't have that for Attack of the Clones. So I remember starting on Kamino... Um, uh, Lama Sue, who's the prime minister of Kamino, which if you like Kaminoans, they're, sh they're shysty dog. Stay away from oh, them. Yeah. They're tricky. But, yeah. uh, Obi-Wan's talking to them and he says, uh, your clone army will be ready. And he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he oh, says, army, uh, what? he's like, yeah. Jedi Master Sifo Dyas ordered them nearly ten years ago, or he ordered them whatever, and he's like, "Jedi Master who?" And I'm like, "Yeah, who the freak is this?" And he goes, "Jedi Master Sifo Dyas," and he's like, "Master Sifo Dyas was killed ten years ago." And in my nine year old brain, I was like, ten years ago." I was like, "That must be Qui Gon's other name." And so I was like, "Did Qui Gon order the clones? What the <laughs> freak is going on?" And then you meet uh, Jango That's Fett. Funny. And he says, uh, dude, Obi-Wan asked Tyrannus. him a question about who, yeah, and he's like, I don't know who that guy is, but I was I was hired by Tyrannus on one of the yeah. moves of Bogdan. And I was like, so who the frick is Tyrannus? Right, and then right. when they introduced Dooku, I was like, okay, so this is clearly not Sifo, Dyas, or Tyrannus, because this guy's name is Dooku. Right. And I was so freaking confused. Yes. And I think to this day, 
if I had to guess, I think that Dooku made the order as Sifo Dyas so that it would be under the radar. But I still don't know. <laughs> I still think well, that that's... did Sifo Dyas make the order and then Dooku killed him, or if I think Dooku killed him and then ma- made the order with his name. Well, no, I think it would have been the other way around. I think that that uh, that Dooku would have put him under duress to like, look, you're gonna do this for me or whatever. Like, you know, what, uh, like, like they had something going. Like, you either had dirt on him or whatever the case is. But yeah, he made Sifo Diaz do this, and then you know, took the saber to him or whatever, had yeah. him killed or killed him or whatever, just so that he could cover his tracks. So, so it's not coming so- back to Dooku. What's so weird is okay. So if you're a Dooku fan, and if you're watching the channel, if if and if you're uh, if you've seen some of the shorts that we've been putting out, um, Dooku Jedi Lost is like the the most info you could ever have on Count Dooku, and it talks about him as a child, as yeah. joining the order, and so him and Sifo Dyas are like best friends, and yeah. Sifo actually had a seat on the council, and that's what's so strange is like. He was on the council, but here's the other thing is that Sifo Diaz had force visions and it's kind of, it's like, um, by the time, what's so crazy is like people like Qui-Gon or Sifo Diaz or even Dooku would have been great Jedi in the time of the High Republic because any type of mind was like, okay, awesome. This is how you feel the force. This is how the force flows through you. Then how can we help the universe with that? And by the time the Phantom Menace comes out, the order is very like, we really want our Jedi this one certain way. And if you can't really fit that bill, then you probably won't be real welcome around here. And like sure. you get that feeling about Qui-Gon when he keeps defying the council. So yeah. Sifo Dyas has these force visions and basically the Jedi are like, well, the the their thought is to take too much heed to the visions that the force gives is a dark side trait because you're trying to control the future because you know a part of the future. Sure. And so he, uh, I guess, long story short, like he's kind of on the, the fringe of the Jedi at some point, but him and Dooku are really close. And now Dooku's being courted by Palpatine. It's just like all this crazy conundrum of things. And then in the Clone Wars, you find out that the Pikes killed uh, the Pikes. I guess Dooku had the Pikes kill Sifo Dyas. But I still am not 100% sure if that's like, you know, so Sifo has this this vision of war and like calamity coming to the galaxy. And I can't tell if Dooku uses that to influence him to create the clone army or if he tries to get him to create it. And he's like, no, this will push it into turmoil. So he kills him and makes it in his name. But something along those lines happens. But none of that is explained whatsoever at yeah. all. And Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. I remember leaving Revenge of the Sith in 2000 and I guess five or six, whatever year that was, and being like, well, I guess we're never going to find out who Sifo Dyas is. Yeah, yeah. I really was still wondering who that was all those years later. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it could have gone. The whole Sifo Dyas, Tyrannus, Dooku thing was very. I don't want to call it confrontational, but it, it definitely threw me through a loop because I was like, wait, what? Like, Did it take who, like, you out of the experience? A, a little bit because like, I was just, I was so confused, but like they're naming all these people and I don't know who the heck anybody is. Right. And then, you know, and then Dooku comes in later, but it's just like, I, it was just, it was confusing for me even, you know, being 17, 18 years old. And, and you know, what's so funny is um, it turns out that, uh, in the script for Attack of the Clones, that Sifo Dyas was going to be Sido Dyas, and that was going to be his name, not to be confused with Dark with Darth Sidious, who is Palpatine. And Sifo was actually a typo. And when they were reading through, they read the typo, and George was like, "Yeah, I like that. Let's keep that one." And that's why Sifo Dyas instead of Sido Dyas. Thank God. Um, but that was so confusing. But then came the birth of the greatest sound in the history of the world because Obi-Wan Kenobi tracks Jango Fett off of Kamino no. after an epic battle. We finally get to see the Mandalorian jetpack uh, rocket no. get shot off. Um, so that was really cool. He, he places a tracker on Slave 1. I can remember, Adam, I can remember 
going into my dad's closet as a kid and he had like a hat or something that he would put all his coins in because people a lot of, a lot more people back then paid cash for things so he just had this bucket of coins and i remember being like wonder if we'll miss some quarters today and just asking like can i have some quarters and he's like yeah that's fine and i go in over the over the course of like i don't remember how many weeks or whatever i saved up and earned and and scrounged forty dollars in quarters and Jeez. went down to walmart with the gallon bag of quarters in a slave one and oh i threw God. that slave one on the conveyor belt and i put the bag of quarters behind it and i put my hands on my hips and then she was like okay she and it was you know 39.99 or whatever and i was like yep that's gonna be you know and i i was like i've already done the math 40 plus 8.25 percent is 44 dollars and whatever you know i did whatever well, the math yeah. was yeah. and i had 45 dollars in quarters and nice. like, i remember standing there beaming and this lady was probably pissed, counting out forty-five dollars and quarters four at a time, so I could have my slave one. Wow! Um, but I still have that slave one today. It's, wow. it's around here somewhere. But uh, um, as that I was rewatched wild. it today, as I rewatched it today, for obviously for research purposes. Yeah, it's, um, it's your job. Yeah, um, that's that's one of the things I wrote down was the sound bites from the slave one was just phenomenal even like when uh when obi-wan and Django are having their little battle there and uh boba gets in there and starts shooting the guns the guns the sound of the guns on the slave one are yeah. phenomenal and then, <laughs> and then yeah and then when the the seismic charge bro uh, it gets me every time i don't care how many times i've seen that movie it gets me every time i like my Dude. eyes are this big and i'm just like yes you remember when the uh the book of boba fett trailer came out and they played the seismic charge like six times for the trailer yes I yes. was like, does someone watch the show? Someone's a fan of the Chiss Ascendancy making these trailers Absolutely. at Lucasfilm? Um, but yeah, that was sick. And then we got to Geonosis. And if the gross uh, sand and the dangerous Tusken Raiders of Tatooine weren't your vibe, then the worst sand and grosser Geonosian bugs of Geonosis yeah. probably do it for you. And it's just basically a hive of disgusting termites living in their own filth and making temples out of their own feces. And that's where Obi-Wan has to go. Um, and then you meet Dooku and I was like, Oh my God, Saruman's in this. And so he starts talking and what's so crazy is he unpacks the whole plan of the Sith. Like you remember in Clone Wars season seven, where Maul's talking to Ahsoka and he's like, mm -hmm. Anakin is the key to everything. Right now, uh, like, you know, Sam Witwer talks. And yeah, yeah. what's so crazy is Dooku's like, no, my friend, no, they've gone too far this time. This is too much. And he's talking about the freaking, he's like, what if I told you that the Senate was under the control of a dark lord of the Sith named Darth Sidious? And Obi-Wan's like, yeah, you're full of bull crap. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, and he tells him the whole thing, yeah. and he's like, "Newt Gunray was in league with him, and he was betrayed on Naboo, and he came to me and asked for help." Obviously, he's telling him a half truth, but the whole thing spelled out about who Darth Sidious is and the Sith that's in charge. It's just so like even Obi Wan is um, not exempt from the the fallacy that like the Jedi know everything. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of like their downfall in the prequels is Ahsoka hears from Maul like. Anakin's going to fall to the dark side. He's the key to all this. And my master's going to turn him. And she's like, Anakin wouldn't do that. <laughs> Literally right. as he's killing younglings. Um, and then Dooku in episode two is like, you know, he doesn't tell him the truth about who he is, but he unpacks Sidious's plan. And it's like, uh, do you think he, that he did that to, because he thought he was going to like defeat them right then and there, or just like, just so that he could kind of spiel it out a little bit or what? Um, my thought is, I think that Dooku was fishing a little bit to see if he could get a sympathetic ear out of Obi-Wan using, like, using his honesty against him. That's true, because he was trying to get him to join him there for a second. Yeah, and I think also, like, part of it is, um, he's testing his ambitions, and he's testing his loyalty to just follow the Jedi, but sure. the number one thing he does is... You have to realize that the this is Tyrannus is the closest thing that excuse me Tyrannus is the closest thing that Obi Wan will ever have to having Qui Gon back. So everything Qui Gon taught you, I taught him, and you can trust me. And that's why he says, "Yeah, you know, 
Oh, I miss Qui Gon. I wish I could have his help right now. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's more Gandalf than Dooku, but um, but then Obi Wan's like, you know, he would never join you. And so that there's a moment there where Dooku's fishing, and he's like, "Man, this is crazy," because it's very similar to Empire Strikes Back in the sense that um, Vader's more on the nose about it, but the the temptation to Luke is still like, together we could overthrow the Emperor. And I think Vader's more forceful with it, but I think if you look at it and you know Luke and you know Anakin versus just being a prisoner of the moment back in you know the 80s watching Empire Strikes Back, knowing everything we know now, there's an appeal to Luke's like sense of right, which is obviously if the Empire is what's crippling the galaxy, then the Emperor has to be the problem. And if you join me, we can rule the galaxy as father and son. And it's an appeal to lost family. And it's appeal to, even though we would be ruling, don't you, you know, I trust you, Luke. Don't you trust me? We're going to do the right thing. And I think Dooku's doing that same thing because he says, join yeah. me and together we can destroy the Sith. So my guess is. that's a is, great comparison. Yeah. It's very, it's like, it's different approaches, but it's the same thing of like, obviously there's a bigger issue out there. Join me. Sure. And we'll figure this out because what's so strange is if you really look at it, especially if you watch Clone Wars, when you look at the separatists and you separate, lol, you separate the separatists <laughs> from Dooku and Sidious and the battle droids are the bad guys and the clones are the good guys. If you just look at the confederation of independent systems that are trying to move away from the Republic – they have a lot of really good points of why they want to move away from the Republic. Yeah. And it's easy to, because you're watching three films, you're like, no, the droids are the bad guys. And, you know, they're killing the Jedi and all these other things. But they they want some freedoms that the Republic isn't willing to, to give. And that's sure. what Dooku's appealing to is... Well, I, I was in the Jedi Order, and I saw things that were wrong with their system, and I left, and I'm better for it. And you can leave the Republic and be better for it as well. And that's what he wants out of Obi-Wan. He, he was definitely the salesman of the operation for sure. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and I, what's so weird to me is I do wonder, though, like, if he could turn Obi-Wan right then and there, is the plan to overthrow Sidious then? And, and Dooku becomes the big bad, the ultimate Sith Lord? Uh, why not? I mean, he's, he's, he's already shown his ambitions as far as like where he's at, what he's doing. Um, I mean, like he already rules the whole planet. Yeah, exactly. So why, uh, why stop there? You know, it's very interesting. Like it's, there's a, it's, it's another one of those, uh, moments in star Wars that they're kind of notorious for is like, um, so if they kill Padme, what's the, what, what happens then? And obviously, like, the answer is probably that's what launches the war versus the Battle of Geonosis. But it's like, if Tyrannus does get his way and Obi-Wan joins him, you know, we know throughout the Clone Wars that Tyrannus had Ventress and he had Savage and he had all these characters right. that were underneath him. But Obi-Wan just seems a little bit more oomph, like this guy could really be an apprentice versus, you know, the hired help. Right. Um, so that's really interesting. But uh, then we finally get the most... To this day, the most Jedi we've ever had on screen together at the Battle of Geonosis, um, Mace Windu comes in and, you know, puts the lightsaber to Jango's throat and says, this party's over. And uh, and that starts, that's really like all they need to uh, to really get the, the war started. If it, essentially, that battle really is what launches it into to chaos. Well, I think that um, uh, that right there too was one of those iconic moments for me because that's the first time you see uh, a lightsaber that's not the blue, or, blue green. Or, or green or red, and so yeah. it's just like you see that that bright purple, and you're like, "What the crap is that?" Like, yeah, like, yeah, and dude, that was that was phenomenal. What's so crazy is in the marketing for the Phantom Menace, Mace Windu's uh, instead of I guess you you did get him with. Uh, the regular card back, but they had a special one that was just like a little rectangular box or square box. Anyways, he has a blue lightsaber is the point I'm trying to make. And he has a blue blue saber in the Phantom Menace uh, because he didn't have a saber yet. He never drew it. And there's that there's that uh, little clip out there where I think they're filming something in the Jedi High Council chamber. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Ahmad Best, who plays Jar Jar, is hanging out with Samuel L. Jackson, and they're talking to George. George. And uh, he yeah. says, you know, so what's a guy got to do to pick a color around here? And he's like, you know, George is like, well, good guys are blue and green and bad guys are red. And he's like, what about purple? And he's like, hmm, we might can do that. Yeah, we, we can do. We can swing something for you. May, you know, Samuel Lowe's like super stoked on it. Um, but I think that was a really cool moment. Seeing the purple lightsaber was cool. Um, yeah. I was not, and to this day, I'm not a fan of the Django decapitation. <sighs> I know I've said this before on probably several of our episodes when we talk about this, but between the purple lightsaber and then the decapitation where like, I just wait for the head to fall out. Like that is every time. Far one. Yeah. Every time. I mean, it's just like, I, I want it to happen. I, I want to <laughs> see an edited version of the movie where that just happens. And I don't know. Dude, it's, it's gotta happen, be yeah. out there. It's gotta oh, be I'm on sure. YouTube. I'm sure. You know, what's so wild is as I'm, as I got older and you see like the little things on film, um, mm -hmm. it's so crazy that Django got uh blindsided by the reek. Um, which is, dude, I mean, it's just, again, it's, uh, it's low on some people's totem poles of movies, but like you get Dexter Jedster, you get the, um, you see the Jedi archives. Like we don't, re we never see the Jedi archives again. Like, I don't think it's in, it's not in episode one. It's not in episode three. Like the Jedi archives, seeing the cool little, like blue, like the hollow books that I guess yeah. you just like touch them and they go to your iPad or whatever. Yeah. Like that's the first time or the, definitely the most time we spend in that area that, that I can think of. And then you have, um, you know, I remember thinking Jocasta knew was really rude. The librarian, I was like, okay, you're talking to Obi Wan Kenobi, you douche. Right, um, right. But uh, it was cool. That's that's one of the only times you see Yoda training the younglings, which is like something that he's like really known for now, especially in the High Republic. Um, and then you have other moments like uh, Camino seeing the troops, uh, stuff like that. And then Geonosis, that whole scene with them is is iconic, and. Uh, then you have the moment where you have these crazy creatures. These are like the coolest um, creatures we've gotten since, uh, you know, like the Wampa or the Rancor. Like you have the Acklay, which is that crazy freaking spider. Um, yeah. The Nexu, which is that tiger looking thing. And then you have the Reek, which is the, the bull. The horned, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's cool because there's a moment where I think uh, Django's like, he's on the ground. I don't remember what he's doing down there, but he's down there. I think he's looking for Mace. And he's, you know, he's killing Jedi and stuff. And the Reek attacks him. And you see he, uh, he gets up and then it starts, you know, doing that shoveling the sand with its hooves. Yeah. And it comes for him and he shoots it. And when he shoots it, um, he turns around and there's Mace. And he shoots and he shoots and he shoots. And if you look at it, he's kind of careless with it. He's like, put down, put down, yeah. put down. Yeah. And then what happens is if you look, he does like this. And he goes to take off, but his jetpack has been compromised. And that's why he gets beheaded. So yeah. I still think that Mace would probably win in a straight up fight, but I do really wonder like what that would have been like if he was able to if if the jetpack was in play, how long how much longer would he have lasted or would he play like the Mandalorian cut and run and go fight somewhere else and then see what's going on? But uh it's so crazy because he was about three minutes away from fighting his own clones. Yeah, which is yeah. another weird concept. Yeah, I, I think that that if you do put that uh, that jetpack into play, like it's not compromised, everything's working fine. I I think that that's probably what he does is because he doesn't he he sees what's going on, sees what's happening, and then he realizes, hey, this this is not for me. I'm not here for this. But uh, I I would assume that he would probably take off maybe. You know, throw some blaster shots, some you know flamethrower, some you know Jedi here and there, trying to get out of there. But mm -hmm. yeah, I say he splits. Yeah, because I think ultimately the contract is, man, it's just so weird to think about. I I start I was talking about this the other day with uh, with Brody from Officially Star Wars when we were doing our Book of Boba Fett review. But I was saying that same thing where it was like, if he knew who Tyrannus was got hired by Tyrannus to be the clone template, trained the clones, asked for a clone himself, and then when he's in the arena, the... The clones are being used against him. Yeah, that's just yeah. so strange. Yeah. Like, yeah. maybe, I don't know. I Maybe he, obviously, Django's one of those guys that, like, he's a contract killer, and it's like, 
as much money as I get for the job, that's all the information I need. So it could be one of those things where it's like he doesn't really need to know that it's going to be used for the Republic. But he was like two minutes away from either leaving or Tyrannus is like, you know, well, on your key, bounty hunter. Like, it's right, just so strange, right. like killing pe- versions of himself or whatever. Um, and then as we round out the movie, we have uh, Dooku versus everybody. Dooku against Anakin and Obi Wan pieces them up no problem, like super fast. Right. Um, he's got the Sith lightning, and if you'll remember, he he shocks Anakin first, and then Obi Wan comes in, and then he he beats Obi Wan, and it's like it's like the little not hardcore beating. He didn't like kill him, but it yeah. was like just enough to be like. And just sit down with that before it gets worse for you. And yeah. then that's when Anakin runs up and he cuts Anakin's arms off and then push him away. And that's when we have the epic moment of old man Yoda walking in with the limp and the cane. Bro, that blew Dog. my mind the first the time I saw The theater was it, going like, buck wild. Yes, yes. Everybody was screaming like, oh my god! Like, I mean, we were like... My eyes were literally this big. I was like, oh, yeah. what is going on? Because like all we've seen is this old man... You know, again, limping in, and then it's bouncing off of this, bouncing, flipping, just, oh, dude, I was, I, I was blown away. It was so sick, and it's yeah. so cool because now that, like, as, like I said earlier, like, I was nine at the time, and in my head at the time, I was thinking, oh, so the whole old man thing is, is a ruse, but it's even cooler than that because now that I'm older and I'm, you know, Star Wars wiser, it's even <laughs> cooler because the limp is real and the cane is real. Yeah. Yoda's ally is the force and a yeah. powerful ally it is. And it's like, it's like he draws on it, dude. And it's like, man, give you chills. If you really think about it, like right. he becomes right. a, a vessel for the force to use and with that. And then after he he's done with the fight, you know, grabs the cane and just kind of limps off. <sighs> like, you know, just like, <sighs> yeah. yeah. Uh. And uh, it's crazy. Cause he's, there's like this back and forth where, uh, there's Sith lightning and then Yoda does this crazy thing that we've never seen before. And Yoda's the only person we've ever seen do it that I can think of yeah. is that he, the, the lightning's thrown at him and he doesn't hold it up with the saber. He doesn't deflect it. He takes it and just like, and absorbs, like absorbs the power it, yeah. into himself. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I remember nine years old being like, what's going on. Yeah. And, uh, it was so wild. And then after that, um, he leaves and then Dooku leaves and uh, the the movie really rounds out with the secret wedding at Naboo and uh, you're like, okay, cool. So here's where Luke and Leia come into play. And then um, the, the probably the most like the moment of the whole movie that still to this day I get goosebumps is they're on, I guess they're on Coruscant. I, when I was a kid, I thought they're on Geonosis because it's like sunset, so it looks orangey. But I think they're on Coruscant, and uh, it's wherever the Galactic Army of the Republic headquarters is. I'm assuming on Coruscant, and you've got uh, you've got Palpatine there, and then you have Mas Amida, who's next to him, the guy that has the the two sets of horns, yeah. and you kind of get the sense that he's a bad guy, and he turns out to be a bad guy. He's always been in Sidious's pocket. But you have some of those characters, and you have Bail Organa, and you can tell Bail's not a super fan of the army, but Alderaan's a, a big planet, so like they're all there with him, and they're standing there on uh, the ledge, and you see like ships after ships after ships, and all yep. of these characters, and actually a slow Imperial March starts to play, and you're like, holy crap! Like before anything's happened, like this is the beginning of the rise of the Empire before our eyes. Yeah, uh, I think that 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 whole sequence of events, going back to the the Yoda Dooku thing, I think that that whole sequence of events really uh, it did a number on me. Just kind of seeing where they're going with the story, and then to to see you know that fight happen, it just I I think it just kind of it, it really did a number on me. Like I don't want to say mentally, but like as far as like where I was, like oh my god, I love this. I'm mm. not stopping anytime soon. Like, this is why I came to this. This is what yeah. I wanted to see. You know, this is, and anyway, but um, 
but then going to the the platform shot i'm actually uh pulling it up again because i wanted to see something but uh but yeah they're all sitting there they're talking about it yeah baylor kind has got kind of this this scour on his face like you know i guess this is what we have to do you know to, to keep the yeah Republican it seems tact. right yeah i was gonna say that same thing it seems like he's not a fan, but if he's like, I guess this is what we have to do. Yeah. But I think even even then still, Bale, Bale and Padme are like, that's why they're so close of friends. And that's why Bale, of course, ends up taking Leia when Padme right. passes away is they're so close. But both of their mindsets are – and this is what's crazy is if you'll remember, um, I think it's in Revenge of the Sith that – Anakin, after they're even married, is arguing with Padme about you have to trust the Chancellor. There should be someone – and in, in Attack of the Clones, he says there should be someone who's in charge. But in Re- uh, Revenge of the Sith, he's like you should trust the Chancellor, and she's talking about maybe there's a different way we can do things. Maybe, we sh- maybe we're going about it the wrong way, and Anakin's yeah. like you're starting to sound like a separatist. And it's yeah. crazy because I think that – and in Clone Wars, you see this some as well, but I think Bale and Padme and some of those who – weren't just trusting the Republic for the sake of the Republic were so afraid of why is war the first, like, why is that the first option? Why is that? And uh, if you'll listen to some of the political mumbo jumbo and jargon from revenge of the Sith, um, it seems like the emergency powers should only have lasted so long. And it's like, he's just held on to him and it's almost like, let him go. Yeah. 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 And he's like a wartime president where it's like, you know, imagine we were in a really crazy, war and the sitting president was like hey i'm actually gonna do five terms and it's yeah. obviously you know i don't know what the terms are for the for the the chancellor i assume they're probably four or five years but if you think about it he was elected at the middle part of the phantom menace so he's been in office for um 10 going on 13 or 14 years by the time revenge of the sith happens if that's if that's the case, so he's probably he's probably in the middle of a third term, which is wow. if it's anything like our political system, it's it's a whole you know extra third uh, of time that he's not supposed to be in office. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, wow. So it's just really interesting. So we're obviously we're coming up here on an hour. I wanted to ask you um, final thoughts. You actually I didn't get the chance, but you actually got to watch through it today. Did anything now that you're deep in the trap and you're a part of a Star Wars podcast and all that stuff, what stood out to you now that you have, you know, different eyes? We've talked about it before, but it, it still gets me that like throughout the very beginning, uh, the, the chase scene when they're chasing down um, the uh, bounty hunter that's trying to kill uh, Padme, um, the chase scene, and then they get to the bar, the club. And, mm. and, you know, they've been joking and, you know, razzing each other the whole time about, you know, you got to take care of your lightsaber because he lost it. And, you know, I hate when you, fl- you know, the flying and <laughs> they were just going back and forth at each other. But then like when he gets in the club and he says, why do I feel like you're going to be the death of me? And, you know, mm. you know, it was just, it was just kind of just talking out of his butt at the moment. But like, it was kind of like one of those little forced moments. It's just like, you know, wh- why do I feel like, like you're going to be why the, the right. reason that I die? Just again, initially joking, right? But not, and I think that that still that stands out to me every time it's said. It's just like holy crap, he's predicting his own his own death. It's kind of funny because he's being sarcastic, um, yeah. But it's like we're on theaters, like oh dang, that sucks, right? Uh, right. I it's think like, yeah, that's and it's it's so interesting too because um, their relationship is so tense this whole movie and i yeah. thought based on what's so crazy is in the book master and apprentice um qui-gon and obi-wan's relationship is super tense and then it starts to pan out and then by obviously by the phantom menace it's more balanced and and qui-gon's willing to hear obi-wan's like input but obi-wan also knows like once qui-gon has said this is the way we're doing it like that's his master and he's gonna follow right. it and what's really interesting is it's you don't get that at all in uh, Attack of the Clones between Obi-Wan and Anakin. It's just a ton of strife. You got the guy that wants to do it by the book, and he's sandwiched between two people who Obi-Wan doesn't do it by the book, and Anakin does even less by the book. Yeah. Um, And it's funny because their whole relationship is kind of summed up in uh, that scene in the arena towards the end where uh, he's like, how'd you get roped into this? You know, and Anakin's like, we were coming to rescue you, master. Yeah. And he's like, good job. 
Like yeah. that's the whole relationship is like, uh, if you would just listen and stick to the plan, Anakin, like stick uh, to the plan. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be really yeah. funny, but you know, I would say I love all the star Wars films. There's things I love about all of them. There's things I would yeah. change about all of them. That's the nature of star Wars. Sure. But I would say if, if it's like, uh, if there's a day that I need to go to bed and I'm feeling restless and I want to turn something on, if I'm scrolling through Disney plus probably more often than any other movie, I start attack of the clones and I watch you know, a third of it or whatever before. Yeah. Obviously I start to, once you're laying there for so long, it doesn't matter what movie's on, you're going to start getting <laughs> right. sleepy. But, um, that's right. the one that I'm like, Oh, I want to watch attack of the clones. And, uh, and I remember growing up being like, this is my favorite one. This is my favorite movie. So I think I think it's cool, man. I think it's on the bottom of some people's list. It's at the top of others. And I think uh, I think the time for like bashing someone's favorite is I just think that's kind of lame. I think it's like I, I, I'm ready for that to phase out kind of like, you know, when we were growing up, like you either played sports or you like Star Wars, you couldn't do both. And uh, I felt like that was starting to I was I was still kind of in that place like. I played a lot of sports in high school and it was, it still wasn't cool to be a star Wars fan. And now it's like, right. you know, I see people wearing star Wars shirts and I'm like, you haven't earned that. And right. I have to be like, okay, I'm, I'm not a gatekeeper. It's okay. Yeah. They can like it. Yeah. Um, but I think it would be cool. I would love to obviously like, you know, uh, down the, down the road, like dream, whatever would be, it would be cool to be a part of a panel where you had someone that their favorite movie was, each of the nine, you have nine people on a panel and they want to tell you why the Phantom Menace is the best Star Wars movie or, or why, why Empire Attack of the Strikes Clones. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so if, that would cool. be really cool. But I think Attack of the Clones has, man, some great, it sets you up for some amazing lore. And I think that so many characters and concepts from those, from that one movie have really branched out. Like the book of Boba Fett, like you think about that and you think, Part of the reason it exists is because we were brought back to the character of Boba Fett because of Jango, and we want to know more about him. And you have this character that's perfect for it. And Tamara Morrison, even twenty years later, you know, uh, characters like Jango or that guy, or uh, you have Dooku, you have, and even like there's even hardcore Zam Wessel fa fans out there. They're like Zam Wessel didn't get her due diligence, didn't get her justice. Like sure. do a book about Zam Wessel. And uh, Dexter Jetster, like I'm reading the book Brotherhood right now, and it's about Anakin and Obi-Wan right at the start of the Clone Wars. And uh, it turns out that Dexter Jetster was like an information broker for the black market before he, you know, retired and did his diner. So yeah. it's not just that he knows Obi-Wan. It's like this guy is like the information guy. Yeah. And so he needs to know something about k and Moidia. So he goes to talk to, to Dexter Jetster. So just little crap like that, like Jocasta knew – is this character that nobody cared about. She was rude to Obi-Wan for five seconds in there. And then, but a, a, one of the shorts that's really taken off on our YouTube channel is the lightsaber rifle that she has in the Darth Vader comics. Yeah. So stuff like that is just, there's, there's all these little seeds that we don't realize were planted in attack of the clones that have really flourished to be some of our favorite star Wars. So absolutely, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely. been a really cool, fun 20 years celebrating attack of the clones. Absolutely. I th I think that th that uh, the more and more that I think about it, that that's, uh, you know, there's always going to be the prequel haters or whatever the case is, but like the prequel really did, like you said, tied in a whole lot of lore that, that we're, you know, reaping now, you know, and I, and I, and I love that. Oh, there's a lot of prequel haters out there, but you know, one of the things that we're benefiting now was from all the lore that we got back then. You right. Know, I mean, we got we got so much in the prequels, and now we're reaping the benefits of it because we're we got introduced to so much more, and now we're getting all the TV shows, we're getting all the the uh, you know, we got the cartoons, we got we got all kinds of stuff out of it, and, yeah. and I think that 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 was that was a huge benefit. And I think also like even for the prequel haters, it's weird because I think it's there's always something new to hate. So like now the sequels sure. are getting hate. But it's like uh, – okay, like for instance, like Disney owns Marvel, so Marvel has the comic book license for Star Wars right now. But coming mm -hmm. up in the next year or two or whatever – I think it's in the next year, Dark yeah. Horse Comics is getting back in the ring. And I guess Marvel and Dark Horse will do comics both simultaneously at the same time. And, you know – Mind-blowing. Yeah. And that's what's so yeah. crazy is like – 
if the movie was as bad as everybody, all the critics were saying it was at the time. And I know it's obviously still going to be somebody's least favorite Star Wars. That's fine. But what I'm saying is like there was enough there that all these comic companies and toys and all these other stuff made a ton of money. And you have characters like Quinlan Voss and Ayla Secura and Kukruk and like all these characters that became superstars to that next level of a uh, fan. And what's yeah. funny is if you asked, you know, we put out a short today about some lesser known Jedi, but um, we were talking about how it within the star Wars, like community that, that I'm a part of, especially on Instagram, I'll ask them like, if you could see one Jedi come back into canon or a canon Jedi you like to see on screen, like they're naming some of these comic book characters who were launched because of the success of Attack of the Clones, even before yep. Revenge of the Sith was a thing. And yep. so my hope is in 20 years, if we're still doing this, uh, we have a conversation about The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi or The Rise of Skywalker and – the positive impact it's had on star Wars. So I do think that there's hope out there for, you know, obviously there's a lot of sequel haters. We were joking around about, uh, you know, on our, on our YouTube, all the shorts we've been putting out. Ironically, the one that has the most views is the origins of Snoke. Snoke and even yeah. though the, you, you go into the comments at your own risk, <laughs> it's funny. Cause it's like, it's still a conversation starter. Like Snoke yeah. is still, a moneymaker in a sense, you know? And so yeah. I hope that in, in five or 10, I think it'll be sooner than 20 years for the sequels because of how much content's coming out, but oh, it's 100%. like, it's just going to take a handful of episodes of the Mandalorian and Ahsoka and whatever else to be like, Oh, that's why this is the way that this is in the sequels. Yeah. And I'm hoping that, that the love is still there for the Daisy Ridley's and the John Boyega's and all that after the same way that Hayden and, and Ewan come back and are like, you know, they they were talking about how they rewatched the movies to get ready for the show. And they were like, Revenge of the Sith was really good. I haven't watched it in 15 years because we got booed off, you know, off tour because all the haters. But it was like, I went back and watched it. It was a really good film. And these are coming from guys who like, you know, Hayden has worked on like, you know, straight to straight to Netflix stuff. He's worked on stuff with, you know, straight to DVD, whatever. Ewan's done indie stuff. Like these aren't guys that just do the big Disney style sure. movies. Like they're they're all over the map with what they want to do. They just love being creative. They're a they're they're a connoisseur of films as much as they're actors. And they're saying, I looked at Revenge of the Sith and it's still really good. So I think it's it's only fair that on the on the week of the birthday of Attack of the Clones that we celebrate it for what it is and and ultimately, like, is there some weird dialogue? Is there some there's some silly lines about sand? Absolutely. But in the same breath, the memes about how sand is coarse and rough and irritating and he gets everywhere have brought me more joy than the cringe that I feel whenever he says the line when I'm watching it. So, yeah. um, you know, we want to say happy birthday, Attack of the Clones. You're the gift that keeps on giving. 20 years later, we still love you. And, uh, Absolutely. man, we want to say thank you guys so much for tuning into the Chist Ascendancy. This is episode 83. We are inching closer and closer to 100. We are putting out a million shorts a day. Uh, if you guys aren't catching up on those, watch them. They're fun little tidbits. Um, and they're really helping grow the channel. So we're excited Absolutely. about those. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Uh, Samuel couldn't be here tonight, but eventually we'll get all three of us on again. That would be fun. Yeah, and uh, remember that the Force will be with you always. We'll skip Samuel's line just because he's not with us today. Uh, but we will catch you guys next time on the Chiss Ascendancy.